everyone, welcome back. For those new here, hi, my name is Jenny. I'm a fourth year medical student and I'm almost done with medical school. With these videos, I hope to share with you my experience in my clinical rotations, what I've learned and whatever resources I used during that rotation, if I used any. So if you're interested in my recent pathology rotation, please keep watching. So the first thing that happens when you get to any rotation is they're going to ask you what specialty you want to go into and why are you interested in saying doing a pathology rotation. And so one pathology is counted as a surgery credit and I heard that it was supposed to be super easy. I know senioritis is coming along and you want to get all those easy rotations. Um, but one of the answers that I gave was I wanted to see what goes into like what goes into all the work that's done after the clinical aspect, like say I order a CBC or a CMP, or say I do um, do a resection of something and I send it off to pathology or a urine culture and I send it off, you know, and I don't know where it goes and magically boom, it comes back and, and I just expect it. So it's nice to see behind the scenes of how everything works and you become a lot more appreciative of um, everything that goes into all the orders that you do. So, the, so during my particular pathology rotation, I saw the whole labs. So blood bank, when you order um, microbiology, when you do your analysis, when you do microbiology, engrossing of specimens, and looking under slides. So I saw the whole aspect of the lab. And also they offered to us to go to um, see an autopsy as well, but the person who usually does autopsies was out of town when I was doing my rotation. So I still have the opportunity to go, I just haven't gone yet. One of the most interesting things that I found um, part of this pathology rotation was the microbiology lab. The only thing is that it smelled so bad. It was like you think urine doesn't smell, but like the comb I don't know actually. Well, my urine. <laughs> you would you would think that urine doesn't smell that bad, but trust me, it smells so bad. Um, and so you would have to culture it and. It was cool to see, I actually wrote some notes down, let's see. So when you do a urine culture, you wanna put your sample on multiple augers, and this is to isolate your desired organism. So for example, your CNA would grow gram positives, your McConkie auger would grow gram negatives, and your blood auger would just have general growth. And if you look at this particular petri dish, you can see that multiple colonies are growing. But at the bottom, there's a specific colony that has a clearing around it. And this clearing means that that particular organism is beta hemolytic. So most things are done by machine nowadays. And so when we take the urine sample, we're able to put it in this machine and it will tell you our drug sensitivity and specificities. And then another part of the lab that we went to was a histology core. And for those of you who didn't know, I worked in a histology core when I was in college at UC San Diego. And it was really cool to come here to a bigger lab where everything is done with a machine. Like the immunochemistry stainings are done with this huge machine. Even the cover slipping and the H&E stainings, all these things are done by machine and it makes me so appreciative because I would spend hours doing those things as a volunteer and then as a as a histology tech. So it's just cool seeing all those things again. Then after that's done, then it goes along and it scans the barcode on all of the slides and it makes sure, okay, this slide is the E. cadherin. Well, it wants to make sure that that E. cad antibody is on the machine. Mm -hmm. So see, it's alarming now. Because it's not on there? So what's happening now is it's, it's scanning all the slides and it's saying, okay, you have KI in here, but there's not enough to run that stain. Mm. So now we have this out. Um, no, it's okay. And then you just push start. And if you notice, there's, it's moving out oh, back. Yeah. And see those two red dots? Uh-huh those lights, that's the sensor. And so 
it'll bring it back. And once it senses those slides, then it um, tells the arm that, hey, there's something in there. This is so cool. And the other aspect of it that I really enjoyed was grossing specimens. I know it's so weird, but it's like, it's like when a person has a lumpectomy and they send it off to pathology and we have to gross it, which means cut it up, put it into blocks and section it to see if um, the, sex, the lump that was taken out from the patient contains what type or to see what type of cancer the patient has or if the patient um, if the cancer has metastasized and it's just really cool to see how they just it's it's good practice to see how they describe things because I'm in my dermatology rotation now and they actually want you to describe lesions or the moles that you see on patients just like how pathologists describe gross specimens when grossing. Like how big it is, what size it is, if it's raised, if it's flat, what's the background, does it look inflamed, does it look abnormal, grossly. And so it was good practice before my dermatology rotation. I feel like med school is a lot of self-motivation and learning on your own. And so during this particular rotation, I was assigned specific topics. Like, um, he gave me pap cytologies that I was supposed to deduce, like, what is the diagnosis. So every day he gave me a stack of slides and he expected me to come up with a diagnosis. So how I went about doing this is I like to read about what is normal, what looks normal, and then I would go on to read about what are the characteristics that define the disease. For most people, including myself, I needed some time to get used to looking into a microscope. It can be really dizzy just because you see a little circle that moves around and you're trying to make one circle. It's hard to explain. But I found that it was best to look at things on the lowest magnification so you see the overall slide and then go down to a higher magnification. Go down, go up, basically go from low to high magnification. And so it's easier to orient yourself on the slide. So here we're actually looking at some pap smear cytology. You can see the individual epithelial cells and the nucleus. They look really good with some neutrophils. So possibly this patient had some acute inflammation. And then he also gave me colon or GI biopsies and I was supposed to tell him what part of the GI I was in and what um, pathology I saw. And the last one was breast, oh breast and prostate. Um, and he just gave me books, um, really old school books, so I don't know if you guys would have any of those resources. Harrison's is a good one that I tend to use, um, just the at a pathology atlas. And then a good place for pictures is pathologyoutlines.com. It has good examples of, the, of what's normal and what is considered um, like the different pathologies. So um, good resource to use if you're interested in looking at pictures. So that was my rotation. Hope you guys learned something. If you have any questions, please leave it in the comment section below. I'm really good at, at responding to all your questions. And if you haven't already, please subscribe and I'll see you guys next time. Peace. Invited to a resident Halloween party. And so Stan and I decided to go. And obviously it's a costume party. So we had to dress up as something.